Dr. Aaron McDuffie Moore was the first black physician in Durham, and he was an avid reader. He loved books and lamented the lack of library facilities in Durham for blacks. They could not use the white library. Moore was determined to correct this. He desired a place stocked with good, wholesome reading matter that should be available to young people in the black community. In 1913, Moore started a library with 799 donated books in the Baraka Room of White Rock Baptist Church on their lower level. He served as superintendent of Sunday school there. Unfortunately, the church library was not well used, perhaps due to the lack of participation from members of other church denominations in the community. They needed a library outside of the church. Moore turned to his business partner at North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company, John Merrick. They had collaborated on several community projects, and in 1916, they established the Durham Colored Library in a building Merrick owned. It was located at the corner of Fayetteville and Pettigrew Streets. The community supported this library in attendance and with fundraising donations. In 1917, the city of Durham granted the library a few dollars each month, but community financial support was what kept them open. In 1918, the library began receiving appropriations from Durham County. And that year, the North Carolina General Assembly incorporated the Durham Colored Library Incorporated. Hattie B. Wooten was the first librarian, and she was the only employee. She earned a salary of $40 a month and was given living quarters above the library. Wooten worked diligently to promote the library. In 1925, she launched a three-point plan intended to increase circulation. Number one, Promote the library as an institution of interest to visitors to the city. Number two, invite all community groups to have meetings in the library. And three, have the library placed in the Negro yearbook. She organized popular activities for children and young adults, sometimes in cooperation with local school teachers. Wooden held the position of librarian until her death in 1932. In 1923, Dr. Stanford Lee Warren assumed the presidency of the Durham Colored Library Board of Trustees, while Hattie Wooten was instrumental in making the library accessible to residents. It became apparent that the library was outgrowing its limited space. A new building was discussed, but it was not until 1939 that efforts to relocate were seriously considered by the board when they passed a resolution to build a new library. The corner of Umstead and Fayetteville Streets was chosen as ideal for the new library. The building was financed primarily using a $24,000 loan from North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company. Significant donations were also forthcoming, including $4,000 from longtime board president, Dr. Stanford Warren, to buy the land on which the library would be built. The new library was named in his honor and opened on January 17, 1940. The first 25 years at Stanford L. Warren Public Library was filled with activity and change. In 1923, Selena Warren Wheeler, the daughter of Dr. Warren, assumed the role of head librarian after Hattie Wooten's death. Wheeler, with the benefit of a comfortable new space, 
was able to build upon the foundation that Wooten had established to continue growing the library in a vibrant community center. In 1941, the library purchased its first bookmobile and began serving rural parts of Durham County. It was paid for through funds from the North Carolina State Library Commission and other state agencies. The bookmobile was a tremendous success. Every other week, it went to locations throughout the county, traveling nearly 600 miles per month. Rural residents appreciated access to library services. As a result of the newly expanded service, Annie Tucker and Gladys Whitted were hired as permanent staff. The library bought a new, bigger bookmobile in 1948. In 1942, Selena Wheeler recognized the uniqueness and importance of materials owned by the library, including the original 799 volumes which Moore used to start Durham Colored Library. Among these were rare books by and about Black Americans and Black culture. Related titles had been added over the years, creating the non-circulating Negro collection. This important piece of library property was renamed the Selena Warren Wheeler Collection in her honor in 1990. In 1949, thanks to Lida Moore Merrick, chairwoman of the Board of Trustees and the daughter of Dr. Aaron Moore, she and friend John Carter Washington established a library reading program for blind patrons. Washington was blind from birth. Together, they started the Library Corner for the blind, providing information resources and recreational opportunities for Durham residents. It was a huge success, and in 1951, Merrick and Washington founded the Negro Braille Magazine, a publication that printed Braille versions of news and feature stories of interest to Black Americans. The magazine was renamed Merrick Washington Magazine, for the Blind in 1981, and is still in operation today. Wheeler retired in 1945, and Ray N. Moore was hired as head librarian until her retirement in 1966. Once again, the library was outgrowing its facilities. In 1949, the Board of Trustees decided to borrow $20,000 from North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company to build an addition onto the library. The addition, completed in 1951, provided the library with a new children's room, extra storage space, a room to house bookmobile supplies, and extra workspace. The library established more activities for children, adults, and families including the Saturday Morning Movie Hour, the Storytelling Institute, Book Review Forums, and the American Heritage Series. Book Review Forums were monthly meetings where attendees gathered to listen to a speaker, usually a Black educator, civic leader, or writer, to review a book or discuss an issue. Patients at nearby Lincoln Hospital were visited and offered reading materials. In 1956, the American Library Association issued a report stating that the existence of a discrete library system was impractical if the population it served was less than 50,000. This report came at a time when many cities across America were beginning to question maintaining separate black and white library systems. The population served by the Stanford L. Warren Library failed to reach this benchmark. Discussions of a merger began between Durham facilities and continued for 10 years. 
1966, the two public library systems in Durham merged, including black branches at Stanford Warren, McDougal Terrace, Bragtown, and John Avery Boys and Girls Club. Stanford L. Warren Library continues to serve the community, like Lincoln Hospital before it, and other Black historical landmarks. It stands to represent the achievements of Durham's Black community. Haiti shines as remarkable evidence of self-sufficiency and Black pride. Know the history and allow it to illuminate paths to the future. 